All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Save the Track Bike. I'm your host, Joshua LeBure. This podcast is sponsored by The Bicycle Broker. On today's episode, I have Terry Berenson. You've seen his videos, so now check out the podcast. Let's get into it. So, yeah, uh, I'm Terry Berenson. I'm a cyclist, filmmaker, person. (laughs) um yeah Uh, i don't know let's talk about your live in new york (laughs) nice yeah let's uh start with your history of cycling and how you got into it sure yeah um i grew up um riding bmx and then uh started racing bmx when i was like 11 or 12 and then uh got involved in skateboarding from there for a little bit and then fell back into bikes i mean i still i always had a like a cruiser or a bmx bike i would like ride with my skateboard to spots and then uh as i got older i kind of fell out for a while and then uh i went to college and i got into track bikes i feel like that's a very common uh, (laughs) route that a lot of people have taken (laughs) yeah we have similar history and racing bmx it seems and skateboarding so and i feel like that that is a pretty common theme (laughs) yeah it's cool uh that i don't know if it's just people like within our age and when like the whole fixed gear thing like kind of came up and where we where we were in our age group or where we were in our life but yeah totally like it just hit on like a little bit of skateboarding it hit on like the old cycling pass so it was like a perfect i was like hooked as soon as i saw it i was like dude this is this is sick how do i do this what do i do <laughs> how can I get one absolutely i think like going back to child like growing up racing racing and riding bmx and stuff that when i saw like macaframa and i saw fixed gear bikes it just reminded me of that same mentality and I think that that was what was so attractive for me. I'm wondering if you had kind of a similar experience. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, when I saw MASH, my friend had a MASH DVD. DVD, wow, that's strange to even say. <laughs> he, he had the MASH DVD, and, like, I didn't know any of the, I was living in San Francisco at the time, and I didn't know hadn't really known any of those guys, but I knew that um, the guy Gabe who filmed all of this stuff, um, I knew that he had a, a skateboarding connection and just the way that it was filmed, like it was, it felt like a skate video. Like, I don't know if, if you've seen it in a while, but the first match was like, I don't know, Mike and Gabe, you guys, I mean, every, all the writers too, they, they killed it. I mean, obviously like the, quality of things has has gone up with just like the accessibility to like nicer cameras and stuff but it still has like this raw like skate vibe to it and that's definitely like what got me like amped to go ride and get into it you know absolutely those all those videos were super formative and and growing up watching Man, I'm forgetting there was some BMX like it was they called it a video magazine basically and I'm forgetting what it was called. Uh uh 411. Yeah. That, that was like 411 skateboard magazine. That was like yeah, that was really good. Every two months they had a new new episode. It was like VHS. It was yep. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I love those days. Those were like the that was like the prequel to like YouTube like <laughs> multiple uploads a week or a month you know it's like you get a new video every two months guaranteed about when did you get into track bikes and what was your first track bike that you got on and what attracted you to fixed gear cycling in general i mean i know we kind of touched on it a little bit but um i mean i will be totally honest i don't know if i can call it a track bike because it wasn't a real wasn't a real track bike but I went, so I, I got like the bug and like around 
2006. Like it was right at the end of the year, and I went and visited my mom. She lives in uh, like Fairfield, Vacaville, California, which is like 45 minutes north of San Francisco. So I went up there and I went to a thrift store and I found like a Schwinn. It was like <laughs> all chromed out. It was like a road bike. And I was like, I can convert this. Like I, So I had a conversion. So I like had this chrome Schwinn and I put, you know, I put a little bit of money into it. And that was like my first fixed gear. But it was a terrible, obviously a terrible bike. Geometry was pretty slack and, you know, but it definitely taught me a little bit of the fundamentals. And then from there, I got a, uh, a little bit better of a bike, but it was still a cheap bike. I got an IRA. I don't know if you remember those bikes. Yeah, I, I had one of those too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had one of those. And then um, <clears throat> from there, it was, uh, I kind of went a strange route. Like, I watched, like I said, I was really into MASH, but I was also really into... I got into like the trick, like I guess it was before fixed gear freestyle. Like it was even coin or even a name. It was just like people would just, you know, fuck off like downtown at the we call it the island of the clock tower, and people would just like show up and you know, riding backward circles or whatever. But I got <laughs> I really got into that, and I like didn't really get into like serious cycling until like you know doing miles and like riding long rides until later um so my first yeah my first like fixed gear experience was like doing tricks and stuff that's funny totally uh, same here too because i think it's that bmx past i was just like i remember seeing macaframa and seeing that keo section and people like spinning handlebars and you know doing 180s off curbs and (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was totally, yeah, I was totally into it. It was also like a, the, yeah, it was like the BMX and skateboarding background and then the whole like being able to like once I like saw that you could ride fakie, like you can pedal your bike backwards. I was like determined to learn how to ride my bike fakie on the, on the fixed gear and <laughs> in like straight back lines. And I was like, this is like you can't do that on any other bike and that's what really got me for a while i was just riding i would ride my bike backwards everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid I, I probably can't do it anymore it take a while to get it but like, that's i would just do that all the time it was so fun oh for sure yeah i i don't even <laughs> think like until like a couple of years ago my longest ride was like 40 miles or something and i definitely wasn't pushing very hard i was stopping a lot <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But it was definitely like that. I would just like ride to the coffee shop or something, you know, jump off some curbs, like maybe meet up in a parking lot somewhere and practice uh riding backwards and doing some bar spins and <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh but it's funny cuz like yeah, I look at it now and it's just like it's a very different experience. I mean, yeah, you look at, like, Matt Reyes, or, I mean, I don't know too many of the other guys' Mm -hmm. uh, names who are still doing it. I know there's, there used to be a lot more, but, like, Matt obviously comes to mind first. He is phenomenal on his bike, and he has, you know, he, he might not, like, ride crazy, like, distance, but he can, like, he, he has what I call traveling tricks. He can just, like, ride to work and like do tricks on the way, you know, which is <laughs> awesome. Like it, that's, that's cool. Yeah. I want to get like it taking it to another level. Absolutely. Uh, I want to get into your, uh, history with filmmaking a little bit. So yeah, I got into uh, filmmaking through my, my work. Um, I was shooting photos and then slowly, transition to shooting videos along with the company and uh i started shooting cycling videos um it was like it was this like the simplest thing to do like (laughs) no thought it was like i enjoy making videos on my own and i also enjoy riding bikes so i should just put these two together and 
and it'll be great. Like I'll enjoy it and it won't be, it won't be like work. So, uh, that's kind of what my, <clears throat> my YouTube like thing was at first. It was just, uh, a place for me to work on whatever. It could just be like a video of my cat in my apartment <laughs> and I can, I can put it up without being worried about being judged by a client or like having feedback or like working with someone else. It was like my place and I could just be like, Oh, I have this idea for uh, putting a GoPro on my head upside down. I can try it and then, you know, test it. And if it works cool, if it doesn't, whatever. So <clears throat> that's kind of where it started. I was just like experimenting and using it as a platform to uh, put it in the world. Yeah, just as a filmmaker myself, I always like find it really interesting and also I mean, I just think it's really rad that you put up the rough cuts too and then you'll have like a final cut. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Yeah, th that was an experiment as well. Like um it was uh obviously like I obviously stole, not obviously, but I borrowed that idea from Thrasher because <laughs> oh. I was, I still subscribe to Thrasher and they have like video parts with the rough cut. And I was like, this is rad. It's like all the in between parts when they're filming and like, they're not all makes like, there's like funny shit that happens in between. There's like, sometimes there's interaction between the filmer and the skater or like security or something like a bird flies in their face <laughs> when they're about <laughs> to go. So I obviously like the videos that I'm doing are like those, those hotlines anyways are like these like one, one take one, like no cut kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to stay true to that. Um, I've been like growing the rough cut part and just like the hotline is supposed to be like the meat of it, like uh, of without any cuts. And then the rough cuts just supposed to be like, I mean, the hotline was only supposed to be a few minutes long and it, over time they've gotten longer and longer because <laughs> I didn't think someone would sit through like the whole rough cut, you know, but um, some people really, I don't know, some people sit there and watch it. And I've had people message me saying like, hey, I am an instructor at this spin class and my spin class like loves they're going to hate me for putting this one on on Monday's class or something. It's like, what? The? <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of interesting where these videos are being played sometimes <clears throat> or where they say they're being played anyways. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Cause I think for me, one of the things I love is whenever the humanity of something is kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, left in, especially in like a documentary or, I don't know. One of my favorite moments of my podcast was when, uh, if you ever go back and listen to Chaz's episode, like his neighbor came in and he was on the phone with me and his car was like backing up down the street and he left his phone on the whole time I was recording while he was like running out to his car to go, <laughs> to go throw his emergency brake on. And like, you could hear the whole thing. <laughs> So his car was rolling backwards? Yeah, his, like, neighbor was, like, he was, like, oh, one second, my neighbor is knocking on the door for some reason. And I just heard her say, your car is rolling down the street. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did you leave that in? Or oh, yeah, it's in there. Car? It's in there. Nice, yeah. So I have to check that out. Uh, so I'm curious to get some of your, because some of the videos just look insane, especially, like, in Mexico with Safa and... <laughs> And oh, yeah. uh, I want to get kind of some stories or just some of your experiences that stand out. Well, definitely the trip in Mexico city was, a, man. <clears throat> um, yeah. Safa, like, I don't think anyone, this isn't news to anybody, but he's, you know, he's like a, an alien on the bike. He's fucking, he's, super talented guy on this track bike on any bike really um so he took me out one day he first of all before i even got there he was like you mu you better bring a bike with gears because you're not going to be able to keep up with me 
it's like, okay, motherfucker, okay, dude. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I'll bring a bulk with gears. So I brought my, um, <clears throat> I have a Richie Outback. It's like mm-hmm. a gravel road bike thing. Yeah. Um, but I have really wide bars on that bike. I have these like Richie, um, I forget the name of the bars, but they're 48, 40, 46 at the hoods. And then they flare out super far on the bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like chasing Safa around Mexico city was, he's super fast and he cuts through, you know, dicey, like squeezes. And I'm like riding this bike <laughs> with these huge <laughs> bars and I had to lock up my brakes. Oh, countless times on the very first ride. Like, and he was on a road bike that first time we filmed. And he, like, I saw him. There's a clip in, in this video that I made where it's called, like, uh, Safa Tries to Kill Me. Yeah. I saw <laughs> and that he's one. on a road bike. Yeah, he's on a road bike. And, like, he, there's a spot where. <clears throat> there's two cars that squeeze in front of them and we're going downhill and there's like speed bumps, potholes, wild dogs, people that just cross everywhere. The streets are narrow. Um, it's Mexico city. Like you don't know what's going to happen next. And we're flying downhill. Um, and this car like locks, like stops right in front of them. So he, he's like veering to the right, but as the car stops, it like, blocks the gap where he can go so he slams Safa slams his brakes on does the nose really kind of and then like pivots his back of his bike to re-correct his line and then he goes to the left like i i like zoomed in on it like on the on the youtube video like really quickly and it doesn't give it any justice like in front of me it's <laughs> like mind-blowing to see that like his handles like he's got like downhill mountain bike i don't know he's got like next level handles on his road bike (laughs) like stuff that stuff that like you know downhill mountain bike kind of it would relate there but he did it on his road bike and i was like what the fuck (laughs) he's a savage and then the the track bike ride um he took me up like four thousand we we climbed up like four thousand feet in Mexico City, I don't know if you know this, it's, uh, it's like 7,200 feet above sea level. So when I got there, I was already pretty gassed, like trying to pedal and climb with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Super lightheaded. Um, so out there, you ride on the freeways everywhere. <laughs> like everyone just rides on the shoulders of these like highways and freeways. It's kind of it's crazy. So we're riding up the highway. <clears throat> to go up to where we're going to start to film and we catch a sketch. We both catch a sketch on this dump truck. I wish I was filming. I had my camera put away and we held on to this dump truck for, it felt like I was on the, on the truck on the side of the freeway for 20 minutes and it pulled us uphill so far. It was the longest sketch I've ever taken and the first time I've ever sketched on the freeway (laughs) (laughs) and it was a dump truck, like going uphill, like not, not slow. It was, it was sick. And Safa was doing it on a track bike (laughs) and he had his feet unclipped, just sitting on the down tube, like smashing uphill with me. It was, I had to like, let go eventually. My hand was so tired from holding the truck and like the driver, I swear the driver knew that we were sketching and was just like cool with it. He was fine with it. It was kind of, it was a really weird experience. So when I put that hotline video out, I was, uh, I put a camera on Safa's bike and it's the first time that I, it's not the first time that I put a 360 camera on someone's like, stem but it's the first time that i used it in the same edit um because i was trying to stay true to like these like guidelines i set up for myself about what a hotline is like not cutting the camera and you know using the same camera angle but if i didn't put that camera on safa's bike you wouldn't see like he left me so far so many times 
that he wouldn't even be in the frame, you know? So I was happy that I put the camera on there as backup. And that's like, I kind of go into it a little bit in the description of the video, but I was just like, this is a different kind of hotline because it's, this is Safa and he's, you know, he smoked me. Good thing there's a camera on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for uh, the videos? Or do you have any traveling planned or anything or any things that um, you should be looking forward to? Not, not really. I was just in London and I was trying to make a shoot happen with Matt out there. Um, but <clears throat> it was a work trip. So I, I didn't really have time to, or the resources to bring a bike and, and stay for a couple, a couple extra days, but I'm supposed to go back out there in January and for some extra time. So I'm going to try to bring a bike, but, um, trying to shoot a London one. I, I feel like it's going to be cold and rainy, but it'll be good. It'll, it'll feel good. Riding in London or is, is like so cool. <laughs> like I, I rode out there, um, a couple, two weeks ago when I was there on like a rented, like really shitty is like a Tokyo bike with like six fifty wheels, like super tall bike with small wheels. And, uh, that, that like opened my eyes to London. Uh, it's a really cool city. So yeah, I guess look out for that. Nice. If it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to get what music are you listening to right now? Like when you're training or riding? Oh, um, music. Honestly, I've been pretty. I've been pretty lazy. Um, I've been letting Spotify tell me what to listen to. I have, <laughs> I have a Spotify and I've been, I've honestly been listening to, um, the like thing, the weekly, whatever it like puts together for you. Yeah. It usually does an okay job. Um, I listen to that and then I listen to this, uh, podcast or not this podcast, but this, uh, playlist put together by this girl that I don't know she's someone I follow on Instagram and it's, it's called uh biker dosing. This girl <laughs> Molly put it together and it's like, biker it's dosing? Super, but yeah, biker dosing. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I saw it. Like, I don't, I don't know who she, she is in real life really, but she's like a film. This is weird that it's going out on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> she's like a film photographer. Uh, and I don't know. I saw it on her instagram and it was like i i listened to this like while while i was on shrooms riding my bike so i decided <laughs> to make a playlist or something and i was like whoa that sounds rad let me listen to that so i like checked it out and it's really cool it's it's real mellow nice i kind of i go for mellow generally when i'm riding these days <laughs> yeah it's either that or turnt get turnt no. right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's your uh, but, bike set up right now? Um, I'm a little bit of a in a um in between bikes right now. So my I guess you want to know the track bike. I have a <laughs> I have a uh number twenty two little wing. Mm -hmm. Um and it's the nicest bike I've ever owned. Uh, don't say that lightly. I've you've heard about my shitty track bikes I had in the past. So this is like, this is the best track bike I've ever had. Um, I just rode it home from work tonight for no reason. I don't know. I have a single speed that I normally ride, but you know how you get that? Like, I don't know. You just ride a track bike and you're like, damn, so much fun to just for <laughs> smash <sure>. home. <laughs> For sure. I'm, I'm in one of those moods right now. I just want to ride it a lot. Lately, I've been I've been liking doing like more um, road ride routes on the track bike. Yeah. Uh, me too. Um, yeah, I think that's super something. Fun. Yeah, it's something that I didn't really like. I said I didn't really do in the past, and mm -hmm. um, it's just something about being on the track bike and riding 
around where there's a bunch of roadies, especially in New York, it's like it's congested. There's only a few, there's a few routes out of the city, you know, so there'll be like a thousand roadies and then you'll see like one guy on a track bike. So <laughs> it's cool to be that one guy every once in a while. For sure. Um, I, I got a little people. jealous the other day I was descending down. We have this climb right outside of Denver um, called Lookout Mountain. And I was riding down it. I was descending on my road bike. And then I saw some guys riding up on track bikes and with their super wide bars. And I was really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Dude, can we talk about track bike trends? Those wide bars are fucking very necessary in a place where there's hills and you're going down. Like it makes sense. Absolutely. I, I feel like for bombing hills, like that's, Another reason why I got into track bikes, I didn't even mention the hill bombing in San Francisco. It's something I don't I don't know about Denver, I've never ridden there, but there's something about at least how the people used to ride, um, like Macaframa, mm-hmm. early mash, like skidding you're throwing skids, yeah, but it's it's part you're you're slowing your bike down and you're you're whipping it out. It's like snowboarding. It's so it feels so good when okay. you're in control like that. Um, and those wide bars make sense there, but you see kids out here in New York where there's not a hill. There's, they're like going down the Williamsburg bridge. It's like a 150 foot descent. You know, it's like, it's nothing. It's cool that like trends from, it definitely came from SF. Like oh, I feel yeah. like that's a mash, mash influence for sure. For sure. I, uh, there's like a track bike or there's a, uh, it's basically like a hill climb alley cat, uh, up lookout mountain that this group called team meow does, uh, in the spring and they have a fixed gear category and I'm definitely planning on doing it this year. Cause it's like, Sick. it's like 40 miles. It's like 4,000 feet of climbing, but it's like, all unsanctioned. Do you have to descend at all? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. And you can use a brake, but most people don't. Um, but yeah, if you end up in Colorado in the spring, you know. <laughs> Dude, that would be, that would be rad. Absolutely. I would probably have to um, get back in shape at that time. That's usually when I'm in my worst shape. Right. <laughs> <laughs> at the, at the very end, beginning of end of winter, beginning of spring, because it's just so cold here. Um, where can people find you? Um, people can find me on Instagram under Terry Branson, and they can find me on YouTube. Um, I think it's oh, it's Terry Branson on YouTube as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy. I. I wasn't clever enough to come up with like some um, alter ego or like internet name. I wish I kind of did, but whatever. <laughs> That's all right. I think it's, find me. it seems like it's doing well uh, without that. So. <laughs> yeah, you can find me if you can spell my last name right. <laughs> nice. Or you can look in my show notes and go click on that. Oh, you there know. it is. Come on, hey, hey. go click on the show notes. <laughs> click on the link. <laughs> Hey, Terry, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Hey, no worries. Thank you. All right, that does it for another episode of Save the Track Bike. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to our sponsors, The Bicycle Broker, thebicyclebroker.com. The music is Slag Girl by Vitamin Pets. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.